I've never forgotten, I think it was about six years of age, when Mum brought this huge tray of eggy bread to the table. And it was like, wow, Mum, we've died and gone to heaven. Start off with a slightly stale bread. Four, five-day-old loaf left over. If it's a fresh bread, then it absorbs too much of the egg, so therefore it gets soggy and you never get it fried and crisp. And if you're not going to use it for breadcrumbs, eggy bread is a must. In France, they call it pan perdu, the lost loaf. Now, eggy bread is great on its own, but serving it with stewed apples is delicious. So the secret here, keep the skins on. There's a lot of flavour in the skin. And also, it stops the apple from breaking down too quickly. You get these nice chunks, as opposed to a sort of apple puree. Mm. Now, get your pan nice and hot and sprinkle a couple of tablespoons of sugar. Take the sugar down to a light caramel. It's quite incredible how cheap it is to make this, and yet it was so filling. If you haven't got apples, this recipe will work pretty much with any fruit you've got in. Don't be scared to mix a pear and an apple, a banana and a pineapple. Just stew it. Lightly toss in the caramel. Get a little knob of butter. That makes a nice toffee apple flavour. Really simple. Now, you can see what's happening. The apples are caramelising, but they're staying intact because the skin's on the apple. And the caramel's turned into this nice, rich butterscotch sauce. Once you've glazed all the apples, a couple of tablespoons of water in there. Bring that to the bowl and let that cook out. Now, the eggs. Three whole eggs. Whisk up the eggs. Add about four tablespoons of milk. You want the egg thick and rich. And then lightly sprinkle in a couple of tablespoons of sugar. That sweetens up the mixture. And when you start frying the bread, it caramelizes it beautifully. A teaspoon of powdered cinnamon. That gives the bread that really nice, spicy deliciousness. Apples are glazing beautifully. And put them on a low heat and get a pan on now for the bread. A teaspoon of oil that stops the butter from burning. Butter in. So that starts frothing. Get your bread in. It's got to be pretty quick now. Now you don't leave the bread soaking. Drain. And in the pan. Once your egg bread has browned, flip it over. 90 seconds each side. That butter gives that nice golden brown colour of that egg. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It's quite remarkable, isn't it? A couple of eggs, a splash of milk, leftover apples, and all of a sudden you've got this stunning breakfast. Now, my apples, they've all glazed beautifully. Get a nice spoon of that amazing juice and drizzle that over. Mmm. Wow. If my mum saw me doing this, she'd kill me. You're getting all posh again. No, no, mum. I'm using a touch of ice sugar to make it look stunning. And that, for me, takes me back to when I was six years of age and I thought I'd just won the lottery. That is incredible. Thank you, Brett. You won't get more breakfast for your buck. My mum's incredibly delicious cinnamon eggy bread with quick stewed apples. A delicious saffron flatbread with mussels. It doesn't get any healthier than that. First job, the super easy saffron flatbread. Put the saffron into the bowl and a couple of teaspoons of hot water. That starts to infuse the saffron, and so you can maximise on the colour across your flatbreads. To make the dough, simply add plain flour, a pinch of salt and pepper to a bowl, and then pour in a dash of olive oil. That makes the dough nice and silky and rich. Your saffron water, and you'll see how concentrated it is now. And then you'll need cold water. Then simply knead to bring the dough together. Mop up all your flour. You can see now, the saffron's activated. It's got that really nice colour. Beautiful. Use your wrist and just knead it nicely. What we'll do now is smoothing out 
the gluten strands. Push and tuck in. Push and tuck in. And each and every time you do this, getting softer, you just sort of form like this perfect, beautiful dough. It smells delicious. That saffron is very powerful. Now, sit that in your bowl, cover it with clean film, let it rest for 10 to 15 minutes. This relaxes the dough, making it easier to roll and gives it time to infuse with the saffron. I'm going to cut that into three and then roll them nice and thinly. Now, lightly flour the surface. And then just bring that to like a perfect ball on the board. Once you've got that nice ball, your rolling pin, and just roll it out. Now, it doesn't get any simpler than that. And then just lightly flour that on top. And a little salt. Cooking the flatbread is easy. Just pop in a hot, dry pan, and they're ready in minutes. As it hits the pan, it starts to blister. She's ready for turning. Beautiful. Get the colour on there. Now you want it nice and crisp, almost blistering on both sides. And because it's nice and thin, it's cooked. Once browned on both sides, just cool on a rack. Flatbread's done. Now onto the mussels. Now the secret behind cooking great mussels is in the speed you cook them. The key is to chop and prep your ingredients before you start cooking. First thing, pancetta. I want it quite chunky. If you can't get pancetta, I always like to use a sort of streaky bacon because I want to sort of render all that flavour out the streaky bacon. Now, tomatoes, garlic and chilli. Cherry tomatoes, they're just going in whole. The garlic, just crush the garlic. So all that flavour comes out. Chilli, I want some heat in here. That's everything prepped. Now to get it cooked. A little touch of olive oil. Pancetta in. Pancetta takes moments. Once it's brown and crisp, put your garlic, chilli and whole cherry tomatoes into the pan. Mussels go in. OK. And I'm using dry sherry. I think it works better in this recipe than white wine, which is classically used at this stage. Then oregano, finely chopped, stalks and all. Oregano on. And then just give that a little mix. And you'll see those muscles start to open. Lid goes on. You've got to lock in that flavour. Got to lock in that heat. The mussels will take four to five minutes to steam. In the meantime, cut your flatbreads into strips. Crispy and crunchy. Now, the mussels. Wow, that is incredible. My goodness me. Now, that is one lunch I definitely don't want to miss. Healthy and delicious. Doesn't get any better than that. Incredible. Steamed mussels with saffron flatbreads, made in minutes and packed with protein and vitamins. This is one fast food meal that really is healthy. Loin of venison, one of my favourite meats. Slightly gamey, absolutely delicious. It's packed with protein, low in cholesterol, and so it's like the Rolls-Royce cut. It's phenomenal. I'm going to cut it into four. Marinade, olive oil, salt, pepper. Thyme is a very sort of dainty, soft, sweet herb, and it goes brilliantly with the rich gaminess of the venison. Juniper berries. The flavour is almost like a sort of rich, bittersweet, slightly peppery flavour. Garlic. Get the back of your knife on. Get the loin, place it on top. Olive oil. Season. Leave that to marinade, and that's ready for the pan. 
cooking the venison, you've got to be a lot more delicate than you were if you were cooking a fillet of beef because it's very lean, hardly any fat on there. Hot pan, olive oil. Keep on rolling it around. It should become nice and springy and slightly bouncy. And that indicates that it's slightly pink, but a little bit firm in the center. Butter. Baste the venison. And then just take it out of the pan and just spoon it over there. Leave that to sit. Now, for the sauce, we're going to do a really nice sweet and sour pepper. Red and yellow pepper. Just stand the pepper up on its base and just cut round like we're segmenting an orange. And look, you've got the seeds there, fit for the bin. Olive oil in, peppers into the pan. A little bit of salt. And by having the skin on the peppers, it doesn't allow the peppers to become too soft and overcooked. It keeps them really nice and robust. Thyme. This is where it gets really exciting. White wine vinegar. It smells amazing, but it starts to glaze the peppers. A couple of tablespoons of water in there. You've got this really nice, sweet and sour, peppery vinegar at the bottom. Peppers out. Carved. Nice, thick slices. And look, the juice is coming out of the peppers. A little bit of salt, just glaze the venison with some extra virgin olive oil. And there, look. Venison with sweet and sour peppers, done.